The Mavic 2 Pro is a fantastic drone for taking pictures with the 21 megapixel Hasselblad branded camera. If you already own one, you've probably been surfing YouTube for videos about the best camera settings for taking photos. I made a few of those, but let me be honest with you, there are in reality no best settings. It all depends on uh, the result that you want to achieve. And with the Mavic 2 Pro, we add the variable aperture into the equation that adds to the complexity. Uh oh, then I'm screwed, you're probably thinking. But you're not. You can start by understanding how the camera works and I will share my best practices uh, how I capture photos to give you a good starting point. There's basically three things that I think about in preparation for taking a photo. The first one I think about is what is it that I want to achieve? Is it low light? Uh, then I need to compensate for that. Is the motion in the picture and I need to freeze the frame? I need to compensate for that. Do I want to do long exposure photography that will present a different result to the image? These are all very important uh, decisions that I need to decide for before I start dialing in uh, the parameters. Once I've made that decision, it all comes down to understanding the exposure triangle, how ISO, shutter and aperture are working together. I assume you understand that relationship. If not, then I actually made a separate video covering this and you can access this through this card. The second thing that I'm considering is uh, the framing and the composition of the shot. And here you can follow several approaches like leading lines, uh, rule of third or symmetry. I will leave a link in the description below for a video that covers this uh, separately. Understanding the different strategies of composition is really important to produce a premium result. Of course you can break these rules, they are only rules and guidelines to help you make better photos. But you need to understand the basics uh, before you can make the decision of breaking them. Finally, I need to get the exposure sorted so I preserve as much information as possible in the picture, preparing it for post-production. I hear this all the time, people saying, what filter did you use to capture that photo? But in general, you don't need to worry about filters when taking photos, unless you want to do daylight long exposure or you want to add an artistic effect to your photo in camera. Everything else can be handled in post. All the great looking photos that you see online are likely post-processed and rarely look very good uh, directly out of the camera. This is because the picture is exposed for the brightest area with the exception of the sun, making the overall image look dark. You need to do this to preserve all the information in the picture. It's much easier to recover information from the dark areas than from the blown highlights. Blown highlights is normally the same as lost information. This is why shooting in RAW is so important, because JPEG is a compressed format, so crucial information might be lost. But add JPEG as an easy preview. Color profile and style settings only apply to JPEG, because RAW can be adjusted in post. With a picture shot in RAW, you can get from this to this. For the picture format, you should choose uh, 4.3, as the 16.9 is just a cropped version of the 4.3. You can always decide to crop for 69 later in the process. So how do I set up my camera for a daylight shoot? I start by switching my camera into manual. Then I will set the aperture in the area of 4 to 5.6 for getting the sharpest result with the Mavic 2 Pro. In case of a low light situation, I will go down to f2.8, maximizing the aperture, letting in the maximum amount of light. Then I reduce the ISO to 100 to get the best picture quality with the least amount of noise. Then I simply increase or decrease my shutter speed until my picture is properly exposed. You need to be aware if there's motion in your picture and you want to freeze the frame that you don't set your shutter too low. If uh, the shutter is too low, you start to see a motion blur, which will basically uh, make the picture appear unsharp. If that is the case, you need to increase your shutter. The exact point when you start to see motion, I'm not really sure, but I guess it depends on a lot of factors. If you have a good bet, then post it in uh, the comment section below. You have three tools to help you nail that exposure. The first one is the exposure compensation value. Then you have the histogram. And finally, you have the overexposure warnings that is shown as tiger stripes in the interface. The exposure compensation value is a representation of the ISO shutter and aperture. And in increments of one, it tells you how much light either halves or doubles into the lens, also known as a stop. You should strive to get the EV value around zero to get your picture properly exposed. The histogram is another great tool that is a graphical representation of uh, the exposure for the photo. It's basically divided into three sections uh, where you have the dark areas of the pictures to the left, you have uh, the highlights to the right, and in the middle you have the midtones. 
In an ideal scenario, you have a nice mountain inside the frame of the histogram where it's evenly distributed. Or exposure warning, those are shown as tiger stripes on the screen. Once you see the tiger stripes, that equals information that can't be recovered in post. These are all great tools that will help you with the exposure. But there are of course uh, corner cases where you need to handle it a little bit different. Especially like uh, when you're shooting directly against the sun. That might not give you a histogram that you're used to and needs to be handled a little bit different. But I think I will cover this in a separate video. If you have a challenging scene with a lot of uh, highlights and dark areas, meaning a lot of dynamic range, you can take this a step further by start bracketing uh, your photos with the function AEB. AEB is also called Auto Exposure Bracketing, and this is where you take three or five photos at different exposure levels. This can either be done automatic by the drone, or you can decide to do it manually by changing the exposure compensation value between each photo. But be careful doing this manually, because the drone can actually move between each shot. And why not let the drone do it, because it basically does it instantly. These RAW photos are then merged in photo software like Lightroom or EasyHDR into a single RAW file containing all the crucial information. This is also known as a HDR photo. With this technique, you can obtain some really amazing results. And if you want to learn how to do it, I made a separate video about this that you can access through this card. There are many recording options available, but I mainly use AEB uh, unless I'm shooting panorama photos. Burst is also a really nice option that will allow you to take multiple pictures of the object and uh, then you can pick the best one afterward. Now you have the insight in how I approach shooting photos with my Mavic 2 Pro and you can do the same. You just need to practice and put some thoughts behind what it is that you're shooting. This will dramatically increase your chance of getting a very nice result. With that being said, there's really no way around uh, having some sort of basic post-processing skills like uh, learning uh, Lightroom or Easy HDR because uh, there's no way of really working with raw photos, bringing the best out of them unless you have some sort of tool doing that. For the reference, I started by using Easy HDR and then I converted into Lightroom. Let's get some great photos posted in the Facebook group. I'm really looking forward to checking out your work. Link for the group in the description below. I really hope you like this video. If so, then give it a like. That makes it easier for others to find it as well. And if you want to watch another video, I can recommend this one or maybe this one.